Getting to Tolstoy meant going on a grueling six-hour drive over broken-up two-lane country roads. I was frequently carsick. By the time we arrived, the grill on our car would be coated with the shells of a thousand insects. Their wings were beautiful. Aunt Charlotte and Uncle Bob lived in Tolstoy. She was a stoic homemaker, he was a welder, and an inventor. Aunt Charlotte was my mother's sister. There were four Munsrud girls. Any gathering of the Munsruds required stamina and the ability to play a lot of pinochle. There were many family grievances. We mostly avoided them. Pinochle helped. Tolstoy was so small that our visits were news in the society section of the local newspaper. The town of Tolstoy was named after Leo Tolstoy, the great Russian novelist. He was settled by Germans and Germans from Russia. Today, very few people farm, and those who do have very large farms. That was not the culture that created Tolstoy. The people I knew there worked very hard and didn't make much money. My aunt didn't have an indoor toilet until 1970. Few of the roads in town are paved. As the people of Tolstoy left or grew older and died, nobody rushed in to take their places. At the last census, the population of Tolstoy was 36. The stories of many lives are written in the artifacts these people left behind. The prairie is also a character in this town. There are pheasants, gophers, and tumbleweeds. Sometimes you can see the form of the wind in the grasses. The quiet can be deafening. Nature is hard. Barbed wire can't keep it in its place. Time and nature sculpted the Tolstoy in my photographs and in my memories. I last saw Tolstoy in 1977. I had been to Tolstoy many times, but on this trip I took my camera. I tried to capture some of the character of the town. These photos show Tolstoy at the end of winter, but before the arrival of spring, probably Easter. This visit was at a time in our family when there weren't enough kids for a real kids' table during a festival meal, but not enough adults had yet died so that everyone could fit at one adult table. Now the kids all have their own gathering places, none of which are in Tolstoy. They have created their own dynasties under their own names.